Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to this uh, chapter of uh, digital instruments in which this lecture is also part uh, titled Motives and Ideation. Uh, my name is Chris Arguelles, I'm part of the team at the HTTP uh, in Table Vienna. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about or share with you some of the ideas that are mm, in the conception, behind the conception of the course that I teach in the Meta Architecture module, um, as well as in the development of my own research around the concept of distance, uh, mediums, and the evaluation of their digital extent. Um, this course is called ACT. Um, in ACT, we develop ways in which to address an architectonic thinking supported by or that wants to deal with um, two-dimensional drawings, uh, paintings, pictures, photographs, PNGs, videos, ornaments, um, decorations, materials, etc. Um, and so one can say any kind of motive uh, without making claims about their character or source um, or quality or um, yeah, size, <laughs> and um, which instead is trying to see them as ideas of, or as a concept of screen or um, a concept of surface, which things are in which things are in, in, intercepted. And um, the course takes into a relentless um, effort uh, to enlarge the capacity of. So the capacity of those uh, things to be copious and to, sur to survey the distance within the frame that allows to place them within this cultoric gesture of arraying them in a constellation of distances in, in an n-dimensional space. So this constellation of distances, um, it's what constitute their architectonic project. And, and this constellation of, or, um, of distances um, one could see it, or one could try directly to assimilate it to the idea of a well-composed, com well well-balanced uh, compos composition, um, which in a way would consolidate the, the, the power of a standard metric vision, also a kind of convention uh, on how, uh, so this well-tempered composition um, that Mm, correlates or that uh, conveys a certain mm, mm, captured frames and which in, in, in terms of, of, um, of weights, in terms of color, in terms of shapes, in terms of volumes, uh, finds its rest in a picture. But this is not only or not precisely, rather not what I mean by a constellation, because um, it would rather be to to discuss it. I would rather like to discuss it in terms of a well-oiled or well-greased mechanism um, that tries to uh, or that oscillates around um, the space of resonances of such surfaces, and this is a bit of the exercise um, that, um, in a way works with, so we take from, from granted or we part, depart from the space of still lives. And in this departure, um, we, we recognize or we um, make peace with the fact that still lives are dead natures. And by, by then building a mechanism that calibrates this end, the n-dimensional distances, and these n-dimensional distances are therefore um, it's necessarily a mechanism that um, relies in an equilibrium that can only be uh, achieved or only while, while in motion we can actually find some sort of stability. Um, and so the task or the main task of the course and the main, um, one could say, the main idea behind is to try to trigger an inner necessity um, that is non-dependent on a rational uh, reasoning of, of sight. And in, 
as much as this will as this sounds very severe it's without that meaning that um, we lost a relationship with the real so that the, this kind of counting on the rational reasoning of side um, so this breakage with that reason uh, rational reasoning of side um, does not does not mean to undo with the relation to the real, but rather to recover a vividly uh, relation to the ideation or the imagination of such um, real, and um, which is not to be understood as as a kind of representational turn or again as a, a turn into. Uh, presenting or to uh, re-present um, but rather in a sense of a pictorial so what would be um, understood as a writerly writerly reading the text or uh, what to say a painterly uh, looking um, or a painterly sight of, of an image um, and this mechanism so this this um, Procedure or this um, artifact um, that I that I try to imagine and that I would like to try to share with you. It's like a it's operating or it operates or it, it proceeds um, within the digital, um, but it tries so it it's really countercurrent to the idea of. Um, Mm, the engine search, the engine search cause effect vision. So the the idea of um, of an automated um, relation between images and uh, words, or between images and uh, objects, or so this um, um, yeah cause cause and effect. So um, input and search. Um, library of pictures, so a library of, of uh, images. Um, so, and, and this kind of um, disruption, or this kind of, um, so in, in a way to to acknowledge this sort of of um, machinic vision by trying to uh, break down the mechanism just by throwing at it. A little piece of metal. So uh, you know, like in a, like in a perfectly functioning um, uh, gear, um, it's enough to just have a little powdered little blitz of of metal in order to cause its um, its um, yeah its, to to interrupt its uh, motion. And um, this is a bit bit what I would like to start with by this picture that borrows from, from the tradition of oil painting, one of its most recognizable uh, icons painted by Leonardo uh, around the year 1500s, uh, the Mona Lisa. Only that what we actually can see in this, in this picture um, is, is not, of course, um, just any Mona Lisa, um, but the one that Virgil Abloh um, reprinted as the uh, IKEA collection of the new I the icons of the digital um, um, house, and he just turned the he just turned the Mona Lisa into a light box, and so the we can what we can see in this picture is actually um, a switch on and off and a cable. Um, powering this light box with the Mona Lisa inside. And as you can see, the frame is just a very um, generic black box. Um, what, I, what I wanted to highlight about this is before the tradition of oil painting, actually, painters used to use gold inside the painting themselves. So the gold was, um, gold leaf uh, was used as a material or as some sort of um, material, so some sort of um, color or some sort of uh, pigment 
um, to depict uh, light or to depict um, in a race of sun or to depict uh, saints or uh, holy holiness. And um, then later gold disappeared from paintings themselves and it started to be used only for the frames. And um, yet many of, of oil paintings themselves then uh, around the 1600s, um, when the still life painters, uh, so when the still life painting became one of the most um, popular genres of painting, um, it was used uh, basically as simple demonstrations of what gold or money uh, could buy. And that's how uh, merchandise or how this product um, actually became um, the actual subject uh, matter of art, of art itself. Uh, of art itself. And therefore, um, the explosion of uh, still life painting um, came together with a very um, with the development of a lot of the natural sciences and also a lot of the optic, the development of optic um, inventions. So lenses and um, uh, new ways of sensorial, uh, augmented sensorial um, perceptions of nature. Um, so the special, the special, um, so one, some of the thoughts that I'm, that I'm gonna share with you now are actually presented by Jung Berger in his book Ways of Seeing um, and also his well, renowned documentaries on the matter um, and what he what he underlines is that the special qualities of old painting uh, let, lend themselves to a special system of conventions for representing the visible. Um, the sum total of these conventions is the way of seeing that oil painting oil painted invented, or that oil painted um, conveyed uh, to ourselves uh, nowadays. So it is usually said that oil painting in its frame is like uh, an imaginary window to an open world. Um, this is like a, a bit of a cliche uh, to say, uh, um, yeah, but which, about which Berger actually argues that if one studies the culture uh, of the European old painting as a whole, and not just as um, one specific painting, um, its model is not so much about a framed window open to a world or open to some sort of um, uh, moment in time, um, a little window uh, through which to see. So it's not a photograph, uh, of, uh, of a moment in time, but it's rather um, a safe of uh, let into the world, into the wall, and a safe in which the visible has been deposited. So it's rather, so it, it is within, um, so I did often associate as well um, what um, of this way of thinking of images as safes, so as um, pockets or deposits, or I um, or as bins um, in which to deposit. Uh, so in which this remains, that which remains, the visible that remains, um, transforms itself into something uh, at rest. And this this something at rest, or this transformation of something uh, that remains. Um, it has to do. Uh, it has to do a lot much more to the keeping of a distance, uh, to the keeping of a distance um, within the frame, that it has to do with a metrics or with a uh, perspective or with a um, history. Um, so the basis of of this ideation is to uh, conceptualize. Um, as a space, or a, um, so the basis of this ideation of some sort of mechanism um, to work around with, with images, um, it, it conceptualizes a space um, similar to that which is inside of a stone column, 
um, in which in which it requires a treatment of the universe in which the eye has never seen. So some sort of like um, a, look, a certain kind of um, mm, arrangement, but also interestingly, like Vitruv discusses through his uh, iconographia, uh, scenographia, orthographia, um, which stem from the implementation of a techne. Um, and this process of cutting, uh, this is Mario Frascari when he discusses um, the role of representation. So this, this process of cutting is at the basis of an understanding of representation as demonstration. And so in, in this way, um, um, the way we work in, in, in ACT tries to borrow um, a certain um, statements or a certain ways in which um, this still lifes painting um, operate in the language of rightly reading. So this is, this is uh, to consider the relation with the images and how they consider, this reconsiders their naming back or the way they name the objects there, how the objects are being named. Um, and in a way, um, this kind of um, representation or this kind of ideation um, grasps certain motives, grasps, or grasps a certain um, uh, descriptions which are not so they are not instrumental descriptions so because um, it's, it's some sort of um, intention of speaking through a surface. And this reciprocity uh, of the rightly reading operates against one-sided ways of seeing. And so this is, um, um, again, a bit of the idea with the um, machine or with the idea of mechanism that calibrates, that is calibrated for a, for a keeping of a distance in an n-dimensional space uh, and therefore relies on an equilibrium uh, which is not an equilibrium uh, in stasis, it's not an equilibrium which is um, in, in grounded in stillness but rather an equilibrium which is grounded in, in transformation. And um, I shortly wanted to um, also go a bit deeper into the idea of frames and into the idea of interception of a frame. Um, 